Hello again, and welcome to another quick run through of some of the features that are part of the HPE ArcSight Logger solution. Uh, I'm using Logger 6.1, a very latest release as of uh, December and January uh, for 2015-2016. Um, there are some new features that we've added that will be significantly useful for a number of existing customers as well as new ones. So I'm just going to very quickly run through those. Specifically, I'm going to talk about what we call uh, archiving and our storage group capability. And then we're going to have a very quick uh, run through of what we call data validation as well. So without further ado, I'm going to jump through the configuration and just run through a little bit around the background around what we call uh, storage groups and then archives as well. So um, what you can do is you can have defined what we call a storage volume. So the volume is the total amount of space available. This is uh, running on a, a virtual machine. So we have a total available of only 24 gig. You would clearly have much more than that because this is about log storage. So this is just a VM that's running on my laptop here. So we can see we've got 24 gig available to that. What you can then do is define particular groups that would make use of that total space available. So we can we can do that both on, on allocated space, but also on age of data as well. So it'll do a combination of rules based on those. And here we can show that we have a number of storage groups. The great thing here is that we can define a maximum amount of storage space, but also a retention policy as well. So we can say that in most cases, we don't really want to be storing our flow data for more than seven days, but we do want to be storing, for example, our PCI regulated data for 720 days, i.e. three years and, and more. So the idea is we have a very careful and, and considered way that we can do that retention. Of course, what we can do is we can also define rules as well that will match out. I'm not going into details around that, but we can, we can define if it matches these filters, for example, we can have that data go into these particular storage groups. So the great thing is, we can take that data, we can direct it into particular storage groups and have different retention policies. And that's really powerful and very strong for what we want to do. But what happens when we get to outside of what's actually stored in retention? That's where archives come in. So we actually have the ability to define uh, archive location. So we can actually do that. Again, this is based on the storage groups. So we can have different storage groups going into different folders. Now here, in this case, we're just using the standard location that we wanted to put those archives in. So it's under the, the ArcSight Arc folder for uh, the data storage here. But that could be anything, any location, both locally or mapped, uh, even to an external storage system as well. So we can have that archive location wherever we want according to the storage groups. Remember, storage groups match with the rule, which maps with the retention policy that we want to define. Um, what we can then do is we can have uh, our jobs, and we can define what we want to run them for. So in this case, you wouldn't really want to run it at six o'clock in the afternoon, the evening, um, because you probably want to run it at midnight or, or just after midnight, for example. But the process is not an export of the data. And that's the important thing here is it's not physically exporting the data. It's literally copying the data files to that export location that for the archives themselves. Nothing more, nothing less. Very simple, minimum hit on logger as part of that configuration. And then what we can actually do is we can look at the event archives. And the event archives are run daily, and we can see those. Now, I've only got a limited number of event archives here, but now we can start to see that against all our storage groups, and all the days that we have, we have access to all of those uh, archive data. So in fact, actually, it then becomes very simple. I go, I'm actually only interested in my flow data. I've only got one of those archives. And if I wanted to do anything with it, I just tick it. And if I wanted to load that data and make it available for me, so for example, this is data that's outside of my retention policy. Remember, that's defined by the rules that I've defined here as well. And if it's outside of that data, so it's older than, say, for example, seven days, it literally will be a case of me clicking load and then I would access the data. It is not re-importing the data at that point. And that's the important and critical thing here. Because the data files are just stored in the archive location, I just mark it and say, now search in this file as well. It will be a slower search, absolutely, but it will be available for me to do that. In fact, I can try doing that, uh, and I just click OK. Uh, it is actually very quick. Uh, it makes it available. And then, hey, presto, there I've made that search available. If I ran a search against that data, it would be available in there as well. You'll also notice another small but very critical data point here as well. So if I clicked on, for example, my flow data from there, uh, I've got this new index capability. Like I mentioned just briefly there, if I, I go to search and archive data, 
it's not using the full set of indexing as it would be if it was online data at that point within uh, the, the retention policy. So it's actually going to be slower. We now actually have the ability, if you needed to search in an archive data, for example, that could be multiple years old, I can now just hit the uh, index button. I'm not actually going to run at this point, but I can hit the index button, schedule a job to run, and it will then re-index that data for me. It does so at a high speed rate. It doesn't take days to run. Obviously, it only takes uh, maybe a few minutes if it's a small amount of data, maybe a, an hour or so if it's a very large amount of data. The idea is, is then suddenly it's indexed, it's much quicker, and it's as if it is on law, uh, online within the retention policy itself. So much, much quicker, much easier for me to manage those indexes. Uh, it's very very simple. Uh, for me to manage those archives, I just load and unload as I need to use them. And when I don't need to use them, I can just unload them, hit the refresh, and then I've, I've uh, managed my data accordingly. So it's all simple. No command lines, no me hacking around with uh, Linux scripting or anything stupid like that. It's all done through a very simple uh, to use interface for doing that. I'm also going to just talk very briefly talk about one tiny but critical relevant point with additional points to this uh, as both online and uh, archive data. I can actually do data validation. So I, what I can do is I can pick a time period. So I've only got a limited amount of data in my, my demonstration system here, for example. What I, what I can do is I can go back to say the 7th to the 11th, which is today. Uh, I can schedule a time to do this. Uh, click schedule and do update. And now it's running a job when it hits that particular trigger time and run a job to search through all of those days of the data and do a full data uh, validation of all the stored data within that. The important thing there is it's going to identify if there is any failed or any inaccurate data in there or any data that has changed. Arcsight Logger has always been defined to be a security solution. So access to that data is impossible unless you use the right interfaces, i.e. the user interface mechanism. So there is no mechanism to go in and delete data. There's no mechanism to remove indexes from that data. There's no mechanism to exclude data from searches or reports. It's there. If it's there, it's viewed. And if it's viewable, you can see the, 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 the evidence that's there. It's always been designed as a security solution. I mentioned that in relevance with regards to the indexing. Uh, for the storage groups and then ultimately for the archives. I can't delete data. I can include archives for searching and reporting and I can re-index them to improve the search speed against that, but I can't delete any data. And data validation gives me a final confirmation that that data has not been changed in, in, uh, in any way as well. So that's a very, very quick run through of the uh, new features that are available of Logger 6.1 with regards to uh, storage groups, event archiving, and what we call data validation. Thank you very much for your time.